Welcome to lesson 14.2 hybridization. These are the objectives. Uh, here we are going to talk about how orbitals mix. Uh, so you could see from a tetrahedron it would be difficult to get a tetrahedron by using these four orbitals. So what actually happens is they actually mix and combine uh, and that's related to a mathematical formula. So here we have a summary of how they, they work. Uh, so for the tetrahedron you actually have these four things mixing. Uh, so 1s and 3p's for form 4s, 1, 2, 3, 4sp3's and that forms the tetrahedron. So if you count the electron domains, 1, 2, 3 electron domains, uh, you need to mix 3. So an s and 2p's makes 3sp2's. Uh, if you need 2 uh, then you can get 2sp's by mixing an s and a p. Here we have uh, an animation of this. So if you mix a, a S and a P, you get two SPs. Mix uh, an S and two Ps, you get SP3. Mix an S and three Ps, and you get four SP3s. Um, just as an extension, uh, how do you get the trigonal bipyramidal? Um, I like to think that the orbital, the donut orbital there, is what causes the uh, expansion of that orbital. So that's the one that's going to have uh, more influence because it's it sticks out closer to the valence shells here so it is has more access to the outside um, and so that's the 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 d squared here the z squared is the one that's involved in the mixing in a similar fashion uh, because of that donut shaped uh, the, the lobes that are on that same axis the x squared minus y squared are the ones that are going to push, get cause repulsion and push these out further so they're going to have the next closest ac access uh, to what's going on in the valence shell and so that's how we get, we use those th that's the next chosen d orbital to mix to create the octahedron. It's nice to have uh, diagrammatic drawings of these things uh, so there are three bonds here uh, one of these bonds is the sigma uh, and so you can see there's two electron domains here so we need uh, two hybridized orbitals so that gives us two, so we need two SP's so that's how we get it. Uh, there are pi bonds here so these, these, these must be from p orbitals so you can just take maybe this one as your p orbital so that's the first here and let's take this one here as the second uh, pi bond formed from the second p orbital. SP3, if we're looking at the carbon here, there are three. Uh, so we need three sp2s and there's one leftover pi. Uh, there's a pi bond here so we need a leftover pi orbital to react. Uh, same with the oxygen, it's got the three as well. Uh, two of those sp2 orbitals have uh, non-bonding electron pairs in them. The tetrahedron, uh, sp3 for uh, the four bonds for carbon. Uh, going a little bit more complicated now, uh, we have here the carbon. There's just two electron domains here. Uh, there are two pi bonds, so we need overlapping pi's at right angles here. Uh, we need two sp's forming the sigma bonds. Uh, sigma bonds down here. There we go. Uh, and oxygen will just have one pi uh, one p orbital forming the pi and this one uh, oxygen will have three sp2s. Looking at the hybridization of beryllium now, uh, if bf2, so uh, we can't have a, a happy electron pair there, we need to promote that so we can get two bonds, uh, covalent bonds forming. Uh, so that's what happens here. Uh, we see here beryllium uh, here we have a promotion so that these bonds can now form so that's uh, that's going to be a pi bond uh, so that's no good uh, so what we do is we have to hybridize that uh, to two, SP, uh, two SPs okay so this is what it will look like in the end uh, we grab that uh, we grab that S there uh, the one S one's being promoted uh, and then hybridized, then the two have hybridized. Uh, so you could probably should put a, a, an extra one in here to show promotion and then hybridization. 
Uh, BF3, a similar thing. There's only one electron there available for covalent bonding, so we need to do some promotion here. Uh, and then we need to con convert the two uh, to 3sp uh, 2s 3sp2s, uh, and that's what it'll look like. Uh, CH4 again, uh, that one, promotion. Uh, make sure you draw the box in between there, 4sp3s, ready to form sigma bonds. And that's what it'll look like. So here's an animation. Uh, so here we have a sigma bond coming in, forming there. They've already, already been hybridized. Uh, the P's there can now overlap and then you can see where the electrons are in the different hybridized orbitals and there are some non-hybridized ones with the pi's. Uh, now we're going to go through, this is a summary, uh, how do we get to this stage here? Uh, let's go through all the steps for nitrogen in ammonia and then we're going to go through all the steps for oxygen in carbon dioxide. So first, as always, we need to start off with the Lewis structure uh, so we can work out how many electron domains there are. Uh, and so we have draw out the orb correct orbital diagram first. Uh, there are four domains, so we need to hybridize those to sp3s. One of them will be full uh, with the electron pair, uh, and the rest will be free to form sigma bonds, so 3 sp 3 So we'll get a trigonal pyramidal 107 degree structure from that. Again, uh, for carbon dioxide, draw the Lewis structures. We can see that for oxygen we're going to need three domains, so we'll draw out the diagram here, we'll hybridize it so we get three sp2s and we need, because there's a pi bond, we need uh, an electron that's not hybridized in the p. So we draw those out, make sure the energy levels are the correct levels and that will give us a trigonal planar molecule. Finally let's look at the sulfate molecule. We're not quite sure on what that actually looks like. So uh, these are some uh, ideas that we came up with in class. Uh, and what we need to do to work out which one the correct one is, is do the formal charge on all of those. Uh, and so what we come up with is the middle one has the correct formal charge. Uh, we can do the bond order and the resonance there to get the structure, so we know it's tetrahedral 109.5. Uh, so we know the sulfur uh, needs two pi's, uh, two p's to form pi's, and the rest are sigmas. So we need to hybridize, uh, get four hybridized there, so sp3's, and we get leaving the two pi's as they are, so we can get the final structure for the hybridized orbitals.